Today's webinar will cover some basic aspects of the IOPS 360 platform. This was created by Police Fire EMS for us uh, to track the specific things that we do. If there's items in here that we can change and improve and make your life better, uh, we really want to know. We're, we're not like a lot of software companies where you put it in the queue and it takes months to get it approved, uh, get any kind of changes made. So as we're going through the platform, as you guys are learning it, definitely give us your feedback and uh, we will implement those as quick as possible. Whenever you log in to the dashboard, you can do that by going to iops360.com and clicking the login button. Uh, if you have any trouble getting logged in, your supervisor can send you a new password. There's also a forgot password link on the bottom of that page. The first thing you'll come to is any My Upcoming events. This will be classes that you're teaching or taking inside of IOPS. Uh, give you a way to quickly get into those. That way, you know, the, the dates and times of the classes, that kind of stuff is right there, easy to, to uh, get to. My first item's expiring is going to be the next section, and this will have any required items, any advanced certifications, any expiration dates you need to be aware of that are coming up soon. That'll give you a way so that something doesn't lapse, you can sign up for different classes, those kind of things from there. The lower part of the page is going to have my requirements. Uh, under this you'll see each of the user roles that you've been assigned, such as EMT, medic, nurse, those kind of things. The Next to that will have each of the requirements that is needed for that position. So in the case of an EMT, we might need a CDL, driver's license, and BLS class. When we go to things that are medics, we you know might have EVOC, NAPD, ACLS, PALS, that kind of jazz that goes with it. Inside of here, we'll break each of those down. Uh, what we consider a class is there's an instructor at a location, at a date and time, a roster is passed around, you sign in and out, we give con ed hours, those kind of things. So that's what we consider a class versus a license would be something you show up when you walk through the door. This is your national registry, your EMT card, there's no instructor, there's no con ed hours, uh, there's just a, a requirement and you've got it. Anything that doesn't fall into those two categories, we're going to consider that a skill. This can be things like intubations, PPD tests, uh, COVID vaccinations, these are things that you do, um, you know, on shift or whenever you have time. They're not necessarily, you don't have to sign up for them like you would a class. So this lower section will tell you exactly what your requirements are, give you a red, yellow, green color next to each of these. So in this case, I'm showing red here as well as my name in the top right hand corner to let you know that something educational is expired and needs to be addressed. From these, if there's any classes in the list, you'll be able to click the uh, next available class, go ahead and sign up for it right through here. Licenses, upload a copy of that, uh, put in the dates, that kind of jazz that goes with it. Down at the lower portion, same thing with intubations, any kind of skills, you can click on it and that'll take you over to the skill portion where you can quickly document a new skill that was performed. When we go up to the top with the education menu, uh, we'll see Con Ed courses as our first item. This is going to be any kind of PowerPoints, quizzes, those kind of things, and you can dive into uh, whichever one, see the details, open the documents, the uh, PowerPoints, the PDFs, any kind of supporting files that go with it, links to different platforms or other sites. Once you've opened all those, the uh, red will go to green, and you'll be able to take the quiz out here on the side. All the quizzes are going to save real time. So if you start it and then you get popped on a call, it's not going to lose your progress, any kind of thing like that. Uh, my classes and find a class are both going to take you to the, to the class search page and show you any up cla upcoming classes in the system. You can filter those down by type, uh, sort by date, those kind of things to help you find those classes, get signed up. And the same thing, if you went to one of these classes, uh, you wanted to make sure that you were put on the roster, that kind of stuff, you can get to it again that way. When we're looking at a class, uh, we'll see the location, the maximum number of participants, those kind of things. Any pre-test information may be on the notes or uploaded in the link section here as well. If you want to go to that class, simply click sign up for that class and then confirm on the pop-up. If you can't make it to that class, uh, make sure you go back into the class and take yourself off the roster. That way it doesn't count as a no-call, no-show, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they know how many people are coming to the class. License advanced search, again, this is going to be your state card, um, national registry, those kind of things. From here, you'll pick whatever license type that you're putting in, EMT basic, date obtained, date expires, license number, and then uh, upload a copy of it into the system. Some of these licenses may not require a, uh, 
uh, supporting documentation. Typically they do, but you may see some that don't require you and it'll give you the option to uh, upload a copy with it. Once it's in the system, that'll go to the educator for approval as well. If we click on my skills, uh, from here you can click on any skill that you've done before. It'll do a breakdown of how many skills you've done per quarter, those kind of items, give you some additional details when it was approved. If you want to create a new skill, click the green button in the top right. Select what skill type that you're doing, date performed, quantity. Each of the skills may have attributes such as an intubation. We did that on a simulator. We did it on uh, adult, neonatal, those kind of things. And then give you the option to upload any supporting documentation. Uh, never upload anything that's got patient information on here, social security numbers, any kind of stuff like that. But if you did go to uh, the OR and the CRNA signed off on your sheet, you know, that'd be something that could be uploaded inside of here as well. All right. uh, a couple other items in here, My Other Education, this is a platform that can record any training, con ed hours that you've done from outside agencies. Uh, it doesn't, it's not required for the uh, organization, for your employment, but it will help keep all your hours in one place for research purposes. Uh, so that's one thing that you can take a look at that area. Whenever research does come, you can go to My Education Documents and Cards or some of the educational reports that we offer and kind of see all the items that you've done inside the system. Uh, there's going to be two tiers. First is going to be by type. So if you're looking for your license, uh, then you can go down into that area as opposed to classes, skills, those kind of things. The second layer will have by year, and this will show you everything that you've done over the course of several years um, in case you're looking for everything I did in the last two years, that kind of stuff for research uh, aspects. Okay. Class reciprocity is a tool that you can use if you took uh, BLS at the county over and you wanted to quickly upload a card, get credit for it, go to the educator for approval. Reciprocity will just get it in the system without having to find a class, um, do the roster, you know, like the normal classes you would sign up for. So here's my card, give me credit uh, for classes is going to be that reciprocity feature. Last item on the education menu is going to be the resources. This will have any kind of policies, procedures, SOPs, SOGs. Uh, those may be required uh, that you have to view those. And if so, you'll see a little orange caution triangle up there next to it uh, to let you know, hey, there's something in here that you need to take a look at. The last item that we're going to cover today is going to be the uh, vehicle checkoffs. So from the operations menu, you can click on vehicle checks. From here, you'll see a list of different vehicle checks that are available to you. If you don't see one that you're looking for, make sure you go through the categories up here. These might be daily checks versus monthly checks or different or by apparatus type, those kind of things. When we get to the uh, checklist, you may see some that say you must begin this with the app. If you do see that, what that means is you need to download the IOPS 360 app. We've got that for Android, iOS, and there's an item on that checklist that is requiring you to scan it in order to start the uh, to prove that that item is there. It didn't go missing from the shift prior. Uh, any ones that have the green fill out, you can fill out from a website, desktop, tablet, whatever you like to as well. So we'll pick one of those, and when we go into that, we're going to have a couple demographics up top such as the name, uh, shift, apparatus, um, a couple different items can be up there. Uh, these are going to be organized by page and then by uh, category, compartment, and then by each question. Some of these like fuel level will be nice and color coded. Other ones may be custom choices that you can select from versus a checkbox, numerical entries, those kind of things. You may see uh, what we call inventory items. This might be your drug dates. Those kind of things can be on here as well. And so basically go through this uh, kind of top down, fill out any items that need to be uh, put in there, any comments, questions, you can drop those in at the bottom. These are going to save real time on the app as well as the desktop. So again, if you start this and you get popped on a call, you're not going to lose any of that information. There's a lot of other items in here. If you want to click on your name in the top right hand corner, this will get you to your user profile, which you can update your contact information, uh, sign up for text messaging if you'd like that service, uh, put in a uh, personal email address if you want to get that stuff off site, if there's any uh, uh, reason you want to do that. The uh, apps will also send out notifications as well. So when you download that app, you can go into the settings in your profile or there and receive notifications only from the app and not get the, the copy of the email 
that kind of stuff, the duplication that way. So again, uh, we appreciate you guys and let us know how we can improve the platform. And we thank you for what you do.